Yonder are giving everyone not one, not two, but three chances to win 250 quid for guessing the flavor of their new beers, and I'm gonna help you do it. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes that's right yonder the infamous brewers and blenders of all things tasty have come out with a brand new competition where you can win 250 quid for each of these beers in beer basically it's not actually a cash prize which was a little bit upsetting because there was the big 250 quid sign that i saw and you've probably seen on the thumbnail of this video and yeah it's actually 250 quid worth of their beer but that is still a good thing because their beer is blending good. So what have you got to do? Well, you've got to find yourself any of the three beers. You can buy them in cans like I've got here. I think you can get them from their website and in some bottle shops. And some places do have it on tap as well. Now, there are three tins here. I've already tried two of them on tap, being number one and number two. But number three, I am yet to experience. And we're going to do that together here today. And I'm going to tell you what I think the flavours of one and two are. And you can go ahead onto their website, fill out the form and guess to your heart's content. Although you do kind of need to buy one to enter but we'll get into that a little bit later so what are the beers well number one is a lager yonder not known for their lager production but as i said i have had this one and actually it was really good hence why i bought another one of the cans number two is a pastry sour that is pretty much what most people recognize yonder for at this point their sour production is one of the best in the country by my standards anyway i think they're brilliant and number three is a pastry stout which well that's my preference when it comes to these three styles and yeah i'm gonna be very excited to get into that one so let me just chuck these two over to the side and I'll go through number one with you and give you a look at the cans. They're all very similar. As you can see on here, it just says Yonder Mystery Beer number one. This one is a lager beer with a mystery flavor at four and a half percent. And it goes into details on the back. You can scan that QR code if you can see it on your screen now if you want to get straight to the site. But it is all over their website and socials about information on the competition. I have already checked the ingredients list on these. There's no giveaways. So... That would be a bit too easy, wouldn't it? It does say it includes wheat and barley, but well, that's about it. Now then, the lager was very nice, as I've already said. It had this really savoury thing going on that, well, could have been interpreted a few different ways, and I've made some notes on my phone, so one second. So as I was sat in my local tap room last weekend enjoying a pint of the lager, I made the following notes. My initial reaction was, peanut straight away peanut you know when you get imperial stouts and it's kind of you know chocolate and peanut or some sort of peanutty element it's a very distinct savory nut flavor which i don't think is from actual peanuts it's just normally an additive uh, probably because so many people are allergic to peanuts so putting it in a mystery beer not a good idea which might lead us to think maybe it's not when i gave my better half mrs crummy beard a sip she said that actually it tasted a lot like dry roasted peanuts now I think for someone who's not familiar with kind of nutty flavor in beer, that's probably a really good shout, if I'm honest. It did have that slightly more, yeah, just roasty, toasty thing going on with it. However, as I got to the end of it, I started getting this bit of sweetness kicking in. It could have been from the malt, but equally, it was just a little bit fruity, a little bit more sweet. And that led me down to the possibility of a uh, PB&J kind of situation. Peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and jam, whatever you want to call it. Peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and jelly which I think is potentially interesting. As I was also getting to the end of it, I thought it tasted a lot like those kind of European nougat bars with the nuts in, but it's a bit niche, so I'm not sure that's gonna be the one. However, on talking to people at the bar, apparently a lot of people thought it tastes like popcorn, which is interesting. I can definitely see where it's coming from. It's definitely got that roasty and a bit of butteriness because of the lager malt anyway. But yeah, for me, it was just, it was peanut all day long. That said, that roastiness could, could have been interpreted in a different way. And I've also written down Yorkshire pudding and jam. And there is a good reason for that. We'll get onto that in a moment as we talk about number two. Now, this is a pastry sour with mystery flavor. There you go, quick look at the can there. Uh, and this one immediately, immediately tasted like those drumstick sweets. I'll put a picture on now if you don't know what I'm talking about. But you know, kind of vanilla and raspberry, sweet, slightly sour, like it was exactly like that, exactly. But I don't see them putting a brand name on it. 
just seems a bit too risky. They don't own drumsticks, so yeah, why would they? Anyway, raspberry and vanilla for sure. However, that could have been reinterpreted potentially, and this was uh, Mrs. Crummy Beards doing again, as rhubarb and custard. It did have a bit of a flair of, if you've ever had rhubarb and custard cider or rhubarb and vanilla cider, then yeah, it has a bit of that vibe to it. And also, all on the same lines, jam and rice pudding. I think vanilla jam again, which I think leads us down a potential theme with jam. I've said PB and J, uh, jam and rice pudding for the sour, and potentially Yorkshire pudding and jam for the lager. Now, it wasn't super Yorkshire pudding, but how would you get that across, really? So, anyway, I'm thinking if the stout has any jammy quality and it feels like something more traditional then i'd be tempted with that yorkshire pudding and jam submission but if not p b and j feels like the most straight up shout and then we get on to the one that we're actually going to taste today this is yonder mystery beer number three a pastry stout with a mystery flavor 6.5 percent again these cans all look very similar as you can imagine but they are good looking things they definitely are quite striking with the mystery element Heaps of info on the back there, which we'll get into a little bit later. But yeah, let me help you and attempt to win 250 quid's worth. And then as it says on the bottom there, 250 quid's worth of beer. Oh, immediately the aroma is distinct. It's malty. It's... Hmm, I recognise it, but I don't know what it is yet. All right. Let's get this a pour in. Looks good in the glass. I definitely got a little bit excited with the pour there, but while we're waiting for that to subside and get some proper aromas, just the effervescence of the beer, it sent it all around the room and I'm getting a real, it's that nutty thing. Again, it's not quite as obvious, I'm gonna say, as it was on the lager, but it's got this like dry, roasty, toasty. Actually, this one smells more like Yorkshire puddings. Um, interesting i'll be honest it's got such a wild aroma to it even just sat here in front of it like it's changing now i'm starting to get like some fudgy notes some caramel bits bonfire toffee which are all things we often say about stouts but like it's really pronounced you don't normally get it quite at this volume before you've even stuck your nose in the glass right then it's just about calmed down enough the head on this not looking great because of my aggressive pour but i'm going to blame myself for that one it is a properly pitch black stout the head on it, well, you can see what colour it is, but it's kind of a, an overly splashy, splooshy, bubbly, um, kind of light tan colour. Now, that's a lactose beer every day of the week. Ha! Wrong! Shut up! It does say it's a pastry stout, so that's to be expected. And, oh, it's got that odd sweetness. Like, a, I've picked it up before in a few stouts. I think it's normally maltodextrin that they use to try and increase the body on it and maybe sometimes use it instead of actual lactose for kind of more vegan alternatives. I'm just looking on the can now. It says it's vegan friendly. So it's a pastry stout that is vegan friendly. So I'm pretty sure there's a shed load of maltodextrin in there, which gives me a bit of a problem in identifying it because I find that just so overwhelming. Like it's so insanely sweet, slightly artificial. I'll be honest, weirdly, the stout, despite stout being one of my favorite styles ever in existence, actually just on the aroma, I preferred the other two. So interesting really really sweet yeah i'm starting to get some dark tones though coming through it's like we're definitely in the bakery section again like it's really hmm creme caramel is what's coming to mind those little pots where like it's just kind of custardy and then got that really rich sauce on the top that's like is sweet but it's also got a bit of bitterness to it like that's that's coming through quite a lot so as a result obviously vanilla caramel notes in there there's a dry savory element to it though that i can't quite put my finger on it is really quite hard we're gonna have to just get straight into this let's give it a go cheers happy guessing oh that's twangy it has got this twangy fruity back end to it hmm i feel like i've put the jam thing in my own head now but it really does have this slightly sweet and sour fruity blend on the finish i'm struggling to pick out what the rest of it is though like it's really Properly roasty toasty up front, all the sweetness, the caramel, the vanilla over the mid palate, and then the finish, as I say, is that kind of slightly sour jam thing. It's not reminding me of anything right here, right now, but it's not a bad stout, but it doesn't necessarily feel the most bad. It's like it definitely feels 
the most forced of the three like the other two took the flavors really well i was like oh this is an interesting interpretation of the beer style this i'll be honest just feels like an adjunct style it's not a bad one but it is just an adjunct style right then let's do a proper top to bottom taste test to try and well help me work out what is in here and as a result help you make a guess at it so initially right on the tip of the tongue got this like heavily toasted almost burnt char it is slightly nutty but nowhere near as much as that lager was i'm going again it's kind of biscuity but it's not quite sweet enough it's a bit yeah it's definitely obscure right then mid palate sweeter notes for sure vanilla and caramel as i've already said not really getting a lot else from it but there is an underlying bitterness again from that's kind of left over from that bit right on the tip of the tongue it's just continued on through i'm kind of thinking that we're probably going to have to ignore those flavors because they feel not completely disingenuous i think some of it's from the maltodextrin some of it is from the malts themselves and as a result they might not be the flavor element that might be just part of the beer and not really the i guess the gimmicky aspect so right at the back of the tongue we're starting to get a bit of a sweet shop vibe kind of fruity sweetness that bitterness is relentless it's still kicking about it's like it's not overly bitter but when you hold it in your mouth trying to pick out a few notes like it just creeps to the point where now that well my tongue I actually think is becoming slightly useless on the finish though deep rich fruity bit of sour still a bit of bitterness and you start to get a bit of that kind of overly sweet maltodextrin mixing in at the end and yeah, it's not great if i'm honest um it just doesn't feel fluid balanced it's not yeah it's not quite there which is a shame because i honestly love yonder's beer and i'm really annoyed because i thought i tried these two and i thought oh yeah they're fantastic this is going to be right on my strict to be great those two are better if you're not going to buy all three and you're not that bothered about stouts go for the others because yeah in terms of just the beer itself it's not the best one but what is that flavor right then to save you having to listen to me waffle on and on about this i'm going to uh, come back once i've got a decision okay for me this has been by far the hardest of the lot i'm still very much adamant there's like a savory almost burnt quality to this beer that is otherwise quite sweet but that kind of burn that char is leaving that bitterness all the way through that thing i said before about the um about the lager potentially being like yorkshire pudding and jam i'm also going to give that up as an option for this if the theme we think is like traditional foods with jam then we've got pb and j rice pudding and jam or rhubarb and custard whichever way you want to go about it and then the yorkshire pudding and jam with the stout however there is a distinct sweet shop vibe to this and i also said that the sour tasted exactly like those um drum drumstick sweet lolly things this tastes a lot like a kind of like a strawberry refresher bar where it's like it's sweet but it's got this sourness and this thing that runs all the way through it it's like the finish is distinctly quite that but the stout elements are changing it up and it's bringing in some caramel and some other bits which make it a bit confused so yeah i think I'm, I'm definitely not confident in my stout guess whatsoever the other two i'm not going to say i'm confident but i think they are a good way to describe them so there you have it let's let's put them in a line right then i'm going to enter two guesses for each both following a different theme and the good news is you can enter this multiple times you can enter for each beer once a day every day until the competition ends which is like at the end of march so we'll talk about that in a minute but yes the lager for the jam theme that we're going to roll with peanut butter and jelly pb and j whatever you want to call it for the sour it's going to have to be rice pudding and jam if we're taking on that jam theme Rhubarb and custard is a good shout, but I still just didn't think it was quite there. And then the stout is going to be Yorkshire pudding and jam. Alternatively, we're going to go down the sweet shop theme, the lager, peanut brittle. Like it, it was so peanutty, so it's the only option we can really go for. For the sour, it's going to have to be, I don't know how to describe it because I'm guessing they're not going to use brand names, but kind of, you know, it's raspberry and vanilla sweet, raspberry and vanilla drumstick, whatever you want to call it. And then for the stout, it's got to be strawberry refresher, strawberry sour, something, yeah, something in that region. But 
who knows, I could be barking up all of the wrong trees. So as I said, you can enter this competition as many times as you'd like. It ends at the very end of March. So you've got quite a good time to go at it and find these beers. And I so say you've got one guest for each every single day. So go for it. You do need to read the terms and conditions though for the competition. I'll link the link to the, the Yonder site and from there you can get to the T's and C's. But basically they do say that well, there is a stipulation that you must have purchased them. So, which is a bit of a tricky one because they say you've got to hold a receipt for them. Now, if you're just going to go and buy these from a bottle shop online and get them delivered, easy peasy, that receipt will be in your email. But like me with these two, well, and actually all of them, because I bought them from my local bottle shop, they don't really do receipts. Like, it's all just automated tap your card and go kind of stuff. And yeah, I've not got proof that I bought these. So which could be problematic. Hopefully, your bottle shop might recognize you and say, yes, they, they definitely bought them here. But yeah, something to take into account. But nonetheless, I think it's a fantastic promo. Whether this is a promo just to get people talking about Yonder trying stuff throughout January and we had a lot of people doing dry January and all that kind of stuff, or it's a great way of getting some beer out the door that they felt like they couldn't sell otherwise, not sure. But it feels like it's done intentionally. The quality of the beer is very, very good. Yes, okay, the stout wasn't great, but I'm a bit picky because... I'm a bit of a stout purist, but honestly, the lager with that extra touch like that was absolutely fantastic. And I'm not the biggest sour lover in the world, but again, the sour of these also was very, very enjoyable. So yeah, what do you think they are? Let me know once you've tried them in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. But really, that is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you would be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Happy guessing. Cheers. <laughs>